And welcome to Advantage Radio Ministries here at Lift FM. My name is Greg Hennis, and this is our weekly program that we are here each and every Tuesday night. And we thank you very much for joining us. Our guest tonight on Second Chances, he's been with us uh, several times over the years. His name is Dr. Greg Jantz. The book we're going to talk about today is entitled Don't Call It Love, Breaking the Cycle of Relationship Dependency. Uh, Dr. Jantz is a certified eating disorder specialist, certified chemical dependency counselor, a nationally certified psychologist, and a licensed mental health counselor. He's the author of also nearly two dozen books, and uh, you also bring Dr. Jantz a message of hope and healing through seminars, conferences, and the media, and I believe you also do a radio program. Is that correct? Oh, my goodness. Sounds like a nice guy. It sounds like a great guy that we want to have on the program and uh, learn a lot from. You got it. Let's do it. Uh, Dr. Jantz, uh, just for the purpose of those of you that have m- may have never uh, heard us with you before, give us a little bit of background on where you're from, kind of home you're raised, and, and how you began your walk with, with Jesus. Well, I um, am really uh, a long-term resident of Seattle, Washington. And this, uh, we're celebrating our 31st year with the facility that uh, we founded. So 31 years, a center, a place of hope. And my personal story is uh, really coming to the Lord more in in a high school situation through somebody who mentored me and uh, going to school, really not knowing what I was to do with my life and uh, really was meeting my wife in college, the classic story, and, and we together began uh, the center. And uh, so we are, we're a 40-plus um, a bed facility where people from all over the country come. Uh, we've been voted in the top 10 in the country to get help for depression. And so we've put together really a, a world-class team, and uh, we're here. Our motto is to change lives for good with God. Awesome motto. How how did you actually get into the business of putting out books? Obviously, two dozen. That's quite a few. Well, early on, we were working a lot with eating disorders, anorexia, and bulimia, and compulsive overeating, and really had acquired some good success in our whole person approach to eating disorders. And so we started with our first book um, back in 1994, I believe it was. And, uh, you know, one, one book gives birth to the next, and so our goal has always been to uh, be able to do one book per day, or per year, I mean, sorry. Uh, this one we're talking about today is entitled Don't Call It Love, Breaking the Cycle of Relationship Dependency. Is this your most recent, I assume? This is Don't Call It Love, uh, written with Dr. Tim Clinton. Okay. Uh, intriguing title for sure, If It's Not Love. What is it, and why was it important to write a book about? <laughs> well, there's something called codependency, which is kind of a fun, funny word, codependency. You go, what does codependency really mean? And uh, what we know is so many people who come and see us end up in relationships where they feel uh, uncared for, uh, their value is dependent upon uh, how they take care or over-serve another person. And we really believe that God's design is, and God's heart for us is to have healthy relationships. So this is all about how do I really have a healthy relationship, or if I become really a relationship dependent and I'm miserable and the person I'm in the relationship is miserable, how do I change that? Speaking of relationships, uh, relationship dependency happens when a person becomes dependent on relationships to function in life. But no matter how hard we try, we are not able to fulfill all the expectations of others. Now, that's a line from the book. Expound on that a little bit. Well, if we expect one person to meet all of our needs, uh, we are going to uh, always live unfulfilled. If we're trying to also uh, over-serve and if our well-being is dependent upon what we're doing uh, for another person, that again is not a healthy relationship. 
Why is it important to look at all of one's relationships when deciding if you may be a person who is dependent? Why is that important? Well, we're looking for patterns in relationships. We're looking for people who, in our lives, um, uh, that we may have unhealthy relationships with. So again, I'm looking at patterns here. Why is it uh, how we talk to ourselves, um, obviously, and, and think that's important? Why is that important? How we talk to ourselves? Well, we have something called Greg self-talk. It's, it's that conversation, that internal dialogue going on in our own brain. And sometimes uh, it can be pretty negative about ourselves. And, you know, you're, you're constantly communicating in a negative way uh, to yourself, about yourself. And, uh, or you may be saying things in your mind, if I only, if I could only make him happy, if I could only make, and something's wrong with me, I'm not making him happy. And we're saying these kind of things to ourselves. Mm. Why is it that fear, you, you hear about fear all the time, but it even comes into play uh, as an important part in relationship dependency? Why, why is fear an important part of that? Well, fear is something that keeps us in a relationship or not changing. Uh, I'm afraid that if I change or if I don't do this, the other person is not going to love me. I'm afraid that if I am not doing everything to make them happy, that uh, I'm not going to be loved. So fear is really the uh, fuel that's running all my relationships. The book we're discussing today is entitled Don't Call It Love, Breaking the Cycle of Relationship Dependency with Dr. Gregory L. Jantz. Uh, Dr. Jantz, if someone would like to obtain a copy of this book, previous books, or learn more about you, your centers, the work that you're involved in, radio program, what's the best way to get all that information? You know, simply uh, find us at aplaceofhope.com aplaceofhope.com And the books, uh, attaining copies of the books, Amazon, things like that, the easiest places? Sure, they should should be available up just about everywhere. Okay. What are some of the uh, personality traits that uh, those that are typically dependent, what are some of those things? Well, personality trait, obviously I'm going to be struggling with probably some low self-esteem issues. I'm going to be struggling as well with um, probably depression and anxiousness. So my personality may be one that uh, comes across to maybe as, as needy, and I'm, I'm, I'm that person that's always uh, doing everything for everyone else. I'm over-volunteering. I'm doing everything, and I'm exhausted. So I live a life of exhaustion, and I may even be telling myself, I'm doing this all for the Lord so that God, uh, you know, will be pleased with me. That could be a factor. So it's always a a person that's trying to overstrive is something that you can uh, also also look to, correct? Overstriving, yes. That overgiving, uh, it's like I'm never quite good enough. Mm. What are some of the... um, personality types dependent people that are vulnerable to? What are some of those types? Well, you may be prone to a person that um, may use you. Maybe you're going to end up, they may manipulate you. Uh, you come along and you're willing to do everything and anything and overserve. So you may have a situation where you're really getting in a relationship where people misuse you. What about a dependent person having a relationship with a healthy person? Is that uh, feasible? Not for long. (laughs) (laughs) Not for long. And really, the real reality is um, you're going to end up, you know, that that healthy person is, after a while, this over-serving is is not going to feel right. And it's going to really create for you a situation of, uh, where they want to escape. And then that's going to cause a lot of panic for you, a lot of panic feelings. So, Why is self-identifying a valuable and necessary step toward healing and recovery? One of the things that we're going to do is we need to identify truly 
who God has designed us to be, our gifts, our talents. And uh, by that I mean, uh, who did God make me to be? What's my, what's my purpose? And God wants us to serve and to be, a, you know, to love one another. But we're talking about something here that's really gone far afield from that. Uh, when I use the term over-serving, um, where my well-being is is dependent upon uh, over-serving you. So really, we need to go, okay, my gifts, my talents, who God made me to be, um, what am I supposed to do with my life? We're visiting with Dr. Gregory Jans. The book is entitled, Don't Call It Love, Breaking the Cycle of Relationship Dependency. Uh, Dr. Jantz, what are some of the things that one should look in or actually look for in a self-identifying relationship dependency? One of the things that we should look for in identifying a relationship with dependency is how do I feel when I'm not with that person? How am I doing when they're not around? Does it create for me anxiety? Does it create for me a sense of of anxiousness, um, and I feel incomplete if I'm not in that relationship or that other person's not around. What are the patterns of relationship dependency? Going from uh, really always being in a relationship, always having somebody in your life, um, that and feeling a sense of panic. Uh, if I'm not in a relationship, I'm going to get right back into one. I only feel good when I'm uh, trying to overserve somebody else. And, and what about the, the fears of relationship dependency? Hello? Yes, the fears of relationship dependency. The fears of relationship dependency. Um, I don't know what, I think I've already kind of answered that one. Okay, okay. Sorry. Uh, how does, that. that's okay, how does emotional abuse contribute to relationship dependency? Oh, emotional abuse. This is such an important topic. Um, I can be in a relationship with another person, and uh, they're really taking advantage of me. They're um, misusing scripture in order to get their way. It's all about power and control. And if I'm needy and somebody really doesn't um, care for me, someone doesn't um, truly love me, I'm going to be prone to really being manipulated, and it could be by design. They're emotionally abusing me to take advantage of me and to get uh, their relationship needs met. But it's a very uh, ultimately, ultimately very abusive. They may be putting me down and even telling me I'm, I am not worth anything, uh, and so they're reinforcing all those negative beliefs that I already hold about myself. And we go from the emotional abuse to the spiritual abuse. Um, does that contribute to relationship dependency? Yes, spiritual abuse, again, it's back to being about power and control. And what we're saying there is uh, I'm misusing scriptures in order to get my way, uh, to put myself uh, kind of in a position where I'm speaking for God. You don't understand. Uh, I understand the Bible. You don't. That kind of position. And what about the role of attachment styles in relationship dependency? Attachment style is something that uh, Dr. Tim Clinton talks about. Our early attachments. How did we attach to our mom, our dad, our loved ones early on? Um, was there a lot of early trauma in our life where we didn't really have, another word could be bonding, uh, we didn't have appropriate or healthy bonding, and now, today, um, one of the things that we're experiencing is we, don't, we can't attach to others in a healthy way or bond. We don't know how to do intimacy appropriately. And, and even to have a close and intimate relationship with God is one that seems almost impossible for, to us. How does spiritual dependency overcome relationship dependency? That's where our spiritual relationship with our Creator is one that 
is so important um, because that's where we want to have a appropriate appropriate dependency and not out of fear not out of guilt but out of really receiving love of who the creator made us to be uh, Dr. Jantz, uh, if someone would like to learn more about this book or previous books is, uh, and they just joined the program, uh, what's the best way to get all that information? You know, at aplaceofhope.com. That's aplaceofhope.com. And uh, we also mentioned that uh, you've, uh, you uh, have a radio program. Is there a place where they can maybe tune in online to uh, keep up with uh, the radio program, things like that? Well, one of the things you can do is um, just go to Life. It's a program I do with Dr. Tim Clinton, uh, Life, Love, and Family, lifeloveandfamily.net. And Dr. Clinton, is he uh, also specializing in some of the areas that uh, you do as well? Dr. Uh, Tim Clinton is the uh, president of the American Christian Counseling Association. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we want to thank you, Dr. Uh, Jantz, for joining us here on Second Chances, and as always, a pleasure. But before we let you go, we always like to allow our guests at the very end of the program to um, pray with our listeners. There may be some people that are really in a bad way with relationships and, and disorders and things, and they're just, they're just searching for some things like maybe we've talked about today. But obviously the, the key to everything and, and getting that freedom is to have Jesus be the center of it all. And they're looking for an opportunity to have someone to pray with them. And uh, whether it's in person or on the radio right now, Dr. Jance, would you be willing to pray with those people right now? Yes, Lord God, we all desire healthy relationships, and we want to have right relationships. And we know a right relationship with you is paramount, and that you would touch us where we need healing and where we need that comfort, where we need to know that we really are lovable, and that we would have... Lord, the power and the strength that comes from you in order to um, make those changes in our relationships that we need to make in order to have healthy uh, relationships that, Lord, are God-designed relationships. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our guest on Second Chances today has been Dr. Greg Jantz, the author of Don't Call It Love, Breaking the Cycle of Relationship Dependency. Uh, Dr. Jance, we have actually just a, uh, just a little bit more here. I want to ask you a couple of other quick questions uh, before we say goodbye. Number one, over two dozen books, uh, or roughly thereabouts, uh, what's the favorite of the books you've put out so far? You know, uh, that's a good question, and one of the things that I'm very excited about this new book, obviously, uh, for somebody that's really desiring a healthy relationship, and they feel you've been bruised and battered from the past, uh, get a copy of Healing the Scars of Emotional Abuse. We just handed a little bit on that topic today of emotional abuse, but Healing the Scars of Emotional Abuse. Okay. And as far as books that you're working on, any idea what you'll be putting out next? You mentioned you try to put one out a year. Any guess what <laughs> uh, the next one will be? No. We're working on a book, uh, Healing the Scars of Childhood, emotional abuse. Wow. Lots of great information and uh, obviously uh, a lot of uh, great things you discuss and and you uh, obviously uh, always try to lead people down the right road. And we just want to thank you for taking time to join us, Dr. Jantz. Oh, you got it. Good to be with you today. Our guest has been Dr. Greg Jantz. The book, Don't Call It Love, Breaking the Cycle of Relationship Dependency. And don't forget a placeofhope.com if you'd like to learn it more. Tune in next week for more Second Chances right here from Advantage Radio Ministries on Lift FM.